So God talked to me this morning in a verse, uh, 1 John 1, verse 8, or no, verse 7. But if we walk in the light, he is in the light. We have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us of all sins. And have you guys ever just been in the presence and everything just seems to stop you know you might be in an anointed worship you might just be hearing a a, a message or a word that is completely touching you because science says now this is just science but if you were to travel the speed of light everything comes to a complete stop so if you're in the presence with your heavenly father who is light everything else stops and you just have him one on one no distractions because everything has come to a standstill because you are within the light of our heavenly father mm, what a time to think about so next time you're on your feet actually it's going to be happening really soon and I have a good feeling about that Things start to slow down, and just take note of that, that you're drawing into his presence. You're coming into the light of Christ, and we can be, well, we can drive a Honda and be in one accord with him. Sorry, Fred, I had to use that twice today. But you know what? It's time to get on our feet. It's time to worship. I'm not going to delay this any longer because I talk too much. All right, turn to your left, turn to your right. Give someone a high five. Actually, give a couple people a high five. Let's start getting happy and getting ready to worship the Lord.
Hallelujah. Give him praise in the house of God. Come on. Give God praise in the house of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. He's worthy of all praise. Come on. Come on. Oh, yes, Lord. You know, the, the story behind this song, it goes like this. The author of that song had a friend that was losing his little baby girl and was losing the little baby boy. And he was praying, and the friend called him. Things are not looking good. They're getting worse. We might lose my little child. And then the script of what he says in his testimony is that he began to raise a hallelujah. He got louder and louder and louder. Now, church, when we raise a hallelujah and we begin to get louder and louder and louder, oh, the windows of heaven are open, wide open, and God is hearing the praises of his people. And he begins to rain down blessings. He begins to rain down healings. And I want you to know that God is just in the beginning of what you are about to experience here at Victory Chapel. The Bible says that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We're covered under the blood. We are covered under the blood. Oh, the friend that sang this song got a report. How many got a report that God has done something for you? Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. How many got a report in the house of God that you know he's done something for you? Oh, hallelujah. Well, the report came in that the little girl was not dying. She got better. She got healed. The little boy got healed. And he wrote this song. He wrote this song, and he began to sing louder and louder. Church, when you come against the enemy and the enemy comes against you, all you got to do is raise your voice higher and higher above his. It doesn't matter what he says. You can get past the voices that he speaks, the lies that he brings. And because you can do that, because the one that's in you is capable of taking you higher and higher in your praises. And when we do that, get ready for a breakthrough. How many here need a breakthrough? Come on. Let's just praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Just begin to raise his name, church. Yes. The name above all names. Just say it. Say Jesus. Mm. Yeah. That's why we're here, church. That's why we're here. Goosebumps are nice, but being in the presence of Jesus is just another level. Amen. Just, be, just begin to thank him. Just begin to thank him. Hmm. Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hmm. Yeah. If you've had a breakthrough this week, can you just begin to clap your hands? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Hmm. Yeah. Jesus. There's nothing like giving him glory. There's nothing like giving him glory. He's pleased by that. And we should be in no rush. We should be in no rush to, to, to skip the opportunity of just thanking him. Yeah. I, Jesus. Church family, I just don't want to rush what God is doing. It, mm. Amen. Amen. Mm, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Mm. Yes. We're doing tithes and offering, but there's just a there's just a spirit here right now that is just I just wanna church, you just want to be in tune with, with the flow of the river. Amen. Yeah. You know, just continue to remain in an attitude of worship. Proverbs 3, verses 9 and 10, it says, Glorify God with all your wealth, honoring him with your first fruits, with every increase that comes to you. 
But so church, you know what I like to say, but it gets better. Then every dimension of your life will overflow with blessings from an uncontainable source of inner joy. That was your opportunity to be happy. I'll, I'll do it again. I'll do it again. Maybe I'll do it in Spanglish. Glorify Dios with all your wealth, with all your dinero. Uh, there we go. Yeah. I, I feel the spirit moving. It is pleasing. Honoring him with your first fruits. Yes. With every increase that comes to you. Notice this, the word doesn't say with every decrease, but with every increase. Yeah. Then every dimension of your life, meaning your marriage, meaning your health, meaning the relationships with your children, your great-grandchildren, with your business, with your soul, every dimension of your life will overflow with blessings from an uncontainable source of inner joy. One gets it. I have hope. I have hope. Yes. Jesus. Mm. Yeah. I just can't get away from just glorifying God. Yes, Lord. I guess I have the mic. I, I can just go with it. Yeah. I, I'm just reminded that Eric, you got growing problems, right? You got growing problems in your business. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord when you begin to go beyond capacity. When you begin to, when you begin to get stretched. Yeah, and it just requires the Lord to just increase your capacity. And, and Eric, he is just honoring your faithfulness. Yeah. So, Lord, we just pray your blessing upon that. Yes, yes. Yeah. And I, I just, I'm just, I'm going to be obedient, all right? He is honoring faithfulness right now. The, he is honoring faithfulness right now. Brother Josh, I just during during worship, the Lord just wanted me to tell you He's gonna honor your faithfulness. You're gonna get an elk this season. Yeah, it's it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Yeah. Even like right now, I get a sense of like, well, I don't even know how that's gonna happen. But I'm just saying right now, like it, He's gonna reward your faithfulness, brother. He's gonna reward your faithfulness. Yes, Lord. Hmm. Yeah. I believe it's someone's birthday this morning. Mrs. Epperson, can you just wave to the church? Because we are we're, we're family here at Victory Chapel. Yeah. Yeah. And Jennifer, the Lord just wanted me to tell you, you are like a Diana in Wonder Woman. Yeah. And 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 your season is coming where he is gonna release Diana out of you. And I'll tell you what, church, <laughs> women's ministry, Live Oak, watch out. So we just, we bless you. We love you. <laughs> and we just look forward to the good things that are coming your way. Amen. Mm. Yes. Yes. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Lord, we just... Yeah, if we got any grandparents in the house, just begin to wave your hand. Yep, yep. Brother Fred just said a, a word for the grandmas that the Lord just wants to pour out his spirit. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Lord.
Amen. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Lord. If you're visiting here, if you're, this sometimes this, this just happens. We just love Jesus, and we just want to be in tune with him. I'm supposed to take your old money, so it's offering time. Do we have runners? Yes. Look, if you have an author, offering, before we, we hand it to the little ones, this is what I just want to encourage you with. The beauty of giving is that your giving, giving becomes weapons in the kingdom. And so as you give today, know that your offering is going to promote the kingdom. Amen? So little runners, just have your way. Give mom and dad's money away joyfully. Jesus. So good. Anyone else need a runner? It is a good thing we extended that nursery or that children's church. Yes. Yes. Hmm. Can we just thank the Lord for these children? Yeah. Yes, Lord. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. We are going to dismiss our young ones, but before they go, this is just, we're just going to lift up our children. Father, we just thank you, Lord, that you would trust us, Lord, with these young ones. And Lord, what a, what a privilege that is, Lord, that you would say that you trust us. And so, Lord, we lift up every child, Lord, that is here in this house. Lord, that, Lord, that you would just pour out your spirit. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, that there is no junior Holy Spirit, but Lord, that there is just Holy Spirit. And so, Father, we just pray an outpouring of your spirit upon these children. Lord, that, Lord, that they would be so overflowing, Lord, of your spirit, Lord, that it would impact the, their homes that they go into, Lord. Lord, that they would just ooze, Lord, into their homes, Lord, into their school environments, Father. Yes, Lord God. Lord, that homes would begin to change, Father. Lord, that moms and dads and uncles and, and aunts, Father, would be come, would just come to the knowledge of you as their Lord and Savior because of these little ones, Lord God. Yes, Lord. Lord, that teachers would be saved, Father. Lord, that diseases would disappear from, from campuses, Lord God. Yes, Father God. So, Lord, we just pray your anointing on these children. Lord, we thank you for them. We bless them, Father. In Jesus' name, amen.
heard of Dr. Cho. Dr. Cho, he was a minister. He recently passed away. I believe he's in China, and he had one of the largest churches in the world. And Dr. Cho, when he was young in his ministry, he he was praying for a bicycle because he didn't have a way to get around, and he was done in a, um, in a situation where he needed a car. He needed a bike. And, and if you've seen any of the housing over there, it, it's very small, very compact. And um, he, he couldn't understand. He had prayed for person after person after person, after thing after thing after thing. Things to make granted. He'd been, seen miracles right and left. There were things that were just amazing, amazing miracles happening in his ministry. But he never got a bike. 
Never got a bike. He couldn't understand it. He goes, Lord, I don't know what's going on, but all I prayed for is a bike. <laughs> I just need a bike. So one day the Holy Spirit spoke to him and he said, you know what? You have not made room for a bike. Where are you going to put it? I'll give you a bike, but what you going to do with it? You make room for a bike and we'll talk. So Dr. Cho went and he cleaned off an area in his, in his little apartment, his house, in um, this empty space, completely clean, completely prepared. And guess what? There's a bike. So you know what? This song reminds me so much of that illustration. You want to do all this, you know, you, you want to have all this in your life. You want God to do this all in your life. What room have you made for him to do it? What have you cleared out? What have you cleared out? So let's just take a look at that today. And I will make room for you. To do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to, and I will make room for you, to do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to, and we got to get rid of the mud. Shake up the ground of all my tradition. Break down the walls of all my religion. Your way is better. Your way is better. Shake up the ground of all my tradition. Break down the walls of all my religion. Your way is better. Your way is better. And I will make room for you. they continue to sing maybe maybe there's a room you need to clean out or let me put it this way maybe there's something you need to let the Lord clean out <laughs> we'll, we'll get to everything else when we need to amen if you need as they continue to minister this morning you think you need to come up and join I think I'm going to get down here for a little while myself. It's just something about praying with the family of God and just taking time. And we're good on about, we're good on about preaching in just a little bit and minister in that capacity. But, uh, and if you're doing fine where you're at, that's okay. Please, we don't make altar calls because we're concerned about, you know, putting guilt trips on people that may not come down. But, if you need to come and pray for a little bit, you're welcome to join us. We're just going to take a few more minutes. Can we do that? You're welcome to join us. If not, maybe you could just pray where you're at, and that's okay to do that. Can we do that for a little while? We're just going to have a little time of prayer. Can we do that? Amen. This is where I lay it down, every burden, every crown. This is my surrender, this is my surrender, here is where I lay it down, every mind, every doubt, this is my surrender, and I 
not on. I'm on here, though. You got me? All right. I've asked Sister Anna to share a word this morning. I've asked her to testify. And uh, so I just, uh, maybe the Lord's put something on her heart. So I'm just going to hand her the mic for a minute. Would you give your pastor's wife, Sister Anna, a hand this morning? Good morning. Just um, since the presence of the Lord here is so sweet this morning. Um, I just want to say what's on my heart is I can feel the passion. God's not seeing you. He sees you. You're going through a rough time or you're just struggling or maybe you think everything's okay. God sees. Sees your heart. He knows your inner thoughts. All of you, I mean, from the oldest to the youth to the youngest, God, he is a personal God. And he loves you, and he's there for you. He sees you. He sees you in every situation, and he loves you so much. He just wants your heart. That's all. He just wants your heart. So if you think that he's not caring about you or that he knows what's going on, he knows every detail, every detail, (laughs) and he loves you so, so much. Yes, amen. Every one of you, everyone, no one's left out. He sees everyone. Every one of you. Yes. God is in love with us. Thank you, Sister Anna. Amen. Well, thank you, Lord. What a wonderful day already. If you're a visitor, welcome. If you haven't been here for a while, welcome back. Welcome home. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I had began a message Wednesday evening that the Lord had put on my heart to preach today. So I began that message Wednesday night. And uh, we're going to finish that here today. It's entitled, Can I Get a Recount? (laughs) Yeah, can I get a recount? Where have we heard that before? Wow. Can I get a recount? I very seldom have ever in all my years of preaching, I've been in it for a while, do I ever title my messages? But for some particular reason, since I've been here, and Sister Ann and I have been here for the last couple months, I've had titles. 
God's just going to place them out there. We, we just, uh, we love you very much so. And I hope that if the Lord will allow us to stay here beyond our years, that we will still be able to say that together. Through thick and thin, amen? Amen. A pastor called me last week. He said, well, is the honeymoon over? And if you've been in church world, you know what that means. I said, oh, no. No, we're still in love with each other. We're still learning to get along with one another and work with each other. And I can't say enough about how, how we appreciate all the work that's being done here, out front and behind the scenes. We're making changes and trying to make them at the right time and for the right reasons. But my number one priority is to stand here before you every Sunday, painting churches, putting this up, fixing that, changing that, that's all, that's all secondary to me. And uh, but standing here is a privilege. I mean that. It is an honor and a privilege. And I thank the Lord for the opportunity to do that. So let's get right into the word today. I believe uh, there's a word that I need to give, though, to somebody who needs to hear this word. The Lord reminds me of the prophets of Malachi, Haggai, and Zechariah, that when the people of God were released, 50,000 strong Jewish from captivity after 70 years, they were released and they made a march of five to 700 miles back to Jerusalem. They began to rebuild. The first thing they began to rebuild was the temple. And after so many years, about 25 years, they stopped building because of opposition. And God sent some prophets along and said, hey, let's get back to work. I hear the prophets today here at Live Oak saying it's time to get back to work. It's time to quit letting things from the past keep us from moving forward. It's time to just say, hey, let's get back on board. And that's what I'm seeing here. I'm seeing, seeing families and folks that are just saying, all right, Lord, Something's stirring in my heart. Something's moving in my spirit. And I love what the word was given this morning. I like that story in the book of Joshua. When Caleb went to Joshua and he said, Today I am four score and five years old. Eighty-five years old. He said, As my strength was then, come on, so is my strength today. What he was saying is the same faith I had when Moses sent me and the other 11 into the land of Canaan to spy out the land of Canaan and find out what it was all about. The same God that I served 45 years ago brought back that same report. The people missed the mark. They missed it completely altogether. Cost them a whole generation in the wilderness. Cost them 40 years and thousands of lives. And finally, when they crossed over Jordan five years later, Joshua looked at Caleb and he said, Give me that mountain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ha. Hallelujah. That's the kind of spirit, no matter how young we are or the kind of age that we are. Young or old, Pastor, that's the kind of spirit that God is bringing back into uh, not only myself. Four years ago, I was standing painting inside of a room. Never had no idea that I'd be standing here again. But somewhere down the line, somewhere, come on, somebody help me this morning. Somewhere down the line, God said, hey, I'm not done with you yet. Where's your faith? Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Give God praise today, church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. He's pouring back into us something that we, we haven't felt maybe in a long time. Something we haven't seen in a long time. Praise God. Something we haven't identified with in a long time. Something we haven't experienced in a long time. If you don't know this, my friend, my brother, my sister, go ahead and make the devil mad and get on board and start trusting God. Start believing God again. Hallelujah, hallelujah. May God be glorified. Let God arise and mine enemies be scattered today. My God, what a mighty God, my God. Hallelujah. 
We need to give me that mountain mindset again. <laughs> Woo. There's a passage of scripture. Can I just take a minute? We, we may get to this message. We may not. I'm starting to wonder, what in the world, Lord, is going on around here? Uh, <laughs> this, I have to admit, I, I'm, a little, I'm not new to the Spirit. Come on, I've, I've slept on those pews you're, li you're, you're living in. You're sitting in today. <laughs> not these, but <laughs> hallelujah. I still, I still remember laying there and people waking me up, shouting all over the house of God. Somebody help me this morning. What in the world are you doing running by me? I'm trying to sleep down here. What's the problem? <laughs> so I'm not new to the Spirit. But God has blessed us to release men and women of God here in this facility that, that want to just share and give and, and just get involved. So, so there's a word today that I, I in, in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, and I'm not going to preach that. I'd certainly like to, but not today. At least I don't think anyway. The battle's not yours, but it's the Lord's. That's the word. One of the words for the day. Somebody needs to hear that. The battle is not yours. It, it's time to relinquish it to God. There may be things in our lives, church. There may be experiences and, and processes that, that, that we, we would say that I'm not ever going to be able to get over that. Don't say that no more. Come on, somebody help me. Don't say that no more. Challenge the God that you love and that loves you today. Challenge what God is doing. Now, I do recognize that there was Paul in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, and he talked about a messenger of Satan that buffeted him, and he said, I prayed and sought God. He sought him three different occasions that, this, that God would give him release from this, uh, this, whatever this demonic oppression or this anxiety or whatever it was that came upon him. But Paul, when Paul prayed, God began to reveal more of himself to him. He got the answer that he needed. Maybe not the answer that he wanted, hello, but he got the answer that he needed. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. The answer that he heard was he told him, he said, my grace is sufficient for you. He said, when, he said in your weakness, my grace, my strength is made perfect. It becomes complete. Amen. The church of Jesus Christ needs a, a higher depth and level of the revelation of of the King of Kings uh, and the Lord of Lords and the glory of God Almighty. Uh, we need God again. We can't do this on our own. Uh, we can't handle this on our own. Uh, we can't submit to God on our own. Uh, but God uh, is on our side today. Uh, he's willing and he's ready to help us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Maybe when I hit 100, I'll settle down. But there's a fire that burns down in my spirit. And it's like a fire. It cannot stand but to get out inside. I, I paint just like I preach. I come home, I could wear a brand new pair of paint clothes, and I could come home, and they, they, I'd have paint all over them in one day, and Anna goes, what is that? How do you do that? Because a hundred plus times a day when I touch something with my finger, it goes like that. Then it goes like that. Then it goes like that. It even goes there. It goes everywhere. It goes all over. It goes, I just, I just put it everywhere. I don't carry a rag with me. What are you talking about? Well, that's how I want to serve God. I want the Spirit to have all over me. Come on. I want somebody to know that I got the Spirit of God somewhere on me. Can I hear an amen? When I come home during the day, I want somebody to know that I've been around the Lord today. Somebody knows that a man of God's alive today in this country we live in. <laughs> I 
<laughs> I can't believe they even let me up here. <laughs> I love it. It's so good. Well, the battle's not ours, church, is it? Lord, put that in our hearts. Problems that are unsolvable, God can solve them. And if he never solves that problem, he's still God and he still loves us. And his grace is sufficient. Let's take a look at this. Can, can we get a recount? I'm going to go quickly. Yeah, you're laughing already, aren't you? I know. Now, I did it once here already. I, <laughs> as we were sharing Wednesday night, again, in 2 Kings chapter 6, 8 through 23, we're going to go ahead and read a little bit of that. And then we're going to move. I'm going to give you three points, three things that the devil himself doesn't want you to know about God. This list is never conclusive, inconclusive, it's never exhaustive. There's always more. There's always more points, always more, uh, you know, uh, th thoughts about what I'm sharing here today. And by the way, we had a wonderful time yesterday morning with the guys. I think there was about 10 of us there, and, and, uh, and we're, we're just waiting to see what we can do here and see what God wants to do with us here. So uh, in the men's department, as the Lord leads, I'm so excited about our women's uh, ministry coming up uh, next Friday night. That's going to be so exciting. And I believe that if I'm right, Sister Jackie, the ladies that have children, can they bring them or no? Absolutely. Arts and crafts for the children. So moms, if they're not home with their dads, if you're married, and then and you bring them with you and we'll go from there. Amen. Excited about that. Hallelujah. Next Sunday, I believe we're having potluck. Am I correct? We are having potluck. You didn't know that. We're having, I said we're having potluck. Yeah, all right. I'm just checking. 2 Kings chapter 6, I believe they have it on the screen, verse 8. We're going to run quickly. Then the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. Verse 9, the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. The king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him of and saved him there not once or twice. Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was sore to trouble for this thing, and he called his servants and said unto them, Will you not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? In other words, he was like, who in the world is giving out all this information? Every time I put a plan together, somebody spoils the plan. Well, there was a man of God that knew the answer. God was showing the man of God, Elisha, the plan, and he would reveal that plan to certain messengers. They would go to the king of Israel and tell him, hey, don't go this way. Don't go this place. And he saved him several times, not just once or twice, but several times. One of the servants said unto him, No, my lord, O king, but Elisha, the prophet that is in Israel, tells the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. Now, if remember, Elisha was the gentleman that told Nahum, Naaman, to go wash in the pool in the, in the river of Jordan. Remember that story? That's in our previous chapters. To go wash in the river of Jordan seven times, dip yourself seven times there, and you would be washed away, washed clean from your leprosy. And he did that. So this same man that Elisha uh, had brought healing into his life is the same captain of this Syrian army. So it's no wonder that the name Elisha was known. I mean, his, his you know, it, it typically, you know, isn't it sad if we do something wrong, everybody just seems to remember it forever? Hello. <laughs> am, I talk, am I in the right church today? I think I am. That when we do something wrong or adverse, and we just either rather it's out of guilt or mistake or innocence, it's like nobody forgets. But they say when you do something good, nobody remembers. What do you say, Live Oak? We change that here. <laughs> Amen. And so Elisha was developing a reputation, and they said, well, he, you know, every word you speak, he, he, in your bedchamber, he even hears it. He said, go and spy where he is, that I may send him and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, behold, he's in Dothan, and therefore sent he thither horses and chariots, a great host, and they came by night and could pass the city about. When the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host can pass the city both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? I mean, probably hundreds and hundreds of soldiers are around the city of Dotham. Now, I mentioned Wednesday night, a little bit of history. Dotham, the only other time you hear Dotham mentioned before this was when they sold Joseph into slavery or they put him in a pit. That was at Dothan. Okay? So then he says here, he said, He answered, Fear not. I like this. In other words, all these soldiers around him can pass the city. And he answered in verse 16. Here was Elisha's answer in times of adversity. And I have to admit, I, I stand here, and you can ask Sister Anna, and she will be as 
she may not be as open, but she will always be honest about all. Of, she's not going to not going to tell you all my weaknesses. Matter of fact, when the when the when the board uh, interviewed Sister Ann and I on uh, on on the on the Zoom, is that what it was? Uh, yeah, I'm starting to learn a few things around here. On the Zoom meeting, they asked what my weaknesses were, and I stumbled around. I said, "Well, I like to talk. Maybe that's a weakness." You know, I mean, I didn't want to make myself look too bad for Pete's sake. What? Where's my board? What kind of question was that, Brother Ben? What kind of question was that? I'm trying to get a job. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so I, it really kind of caught me off, off guard. And, and so guess what? I had Sister Anna sit next to me. They asked her. said, what is Pat, brother, brother Larry's uh, weaknesses? You know what she said? This is, a, this is a woman of God. She said he don't have any. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I guess that told them, didn't it? <laughs> Yeah, I think I told you, matter of fact, a week or two, we was driving down the road, and I started doing something or saying something. She said, if you don't be careful, I'll let that board know where your weaknesses are. <laughs> well, oh, man. So anyway, I am not always the first to rally to the front, you know, and always just, just I mean, jump right out there with the positivity. I'm not always, you know, the first to jump out there and say, you know, I mean, hey, God's got this, and I have to kind of process. Do I have any processors in the house today? You kind of, yeah, I think so. You have to kind of process it sometimes. But I recognize that, uh, you know, sometimes I speak a little bit too early before I actually know really what's going on. But really, that should be the response as we grow into things. The Lord, that when adversity comes our way, come on, when it looks like, our, as one man said, your back is against the wall and your ears are pinned. That's when you know you're in a lot of trouble and it may be a difficult day ahead or a week or a month or a year or whatever. But God should be the first one that we should run to, wouldn't you say? Amen. So I'm trying to do better. Uh, in, but he looked at him, he answered, he said, and I love this answer, fear not. For they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee. Here's what he said in 21st century. He said, Lord, I need this servant. We need a recount. Come on, we need a recount. Hallelujah. And he said this, and Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Hallelujah. Now, for us that are a little older than the rest of you, I'm telling you, you think your experience doesn't make any difference in the kingdom of God? I'm here to tell you today, family, today, that your experience with God is going to help somebody coming behind you. You say, what in the world did I go that through that for? Maybe you went through that to help somebody else. God didn't allow you to go through that to, to stick you in a world of self-pity and for you to live in that place. Can I hear an amen? But God sent you, hallelujah, and allowed you to go through that town of Dothan. He allowed you to go into that pit. But you know today, you came out of that place, hallelujah, and you're not living there anymore. What used to tear you down and pull you away, you recognize it quicker today than you did yesterday. I can imagine the times when I come home and, and remember now, remember, you got a pastor here that worked a secular job for years. I know what it's like to live in the world. I wasn't raised behind a pastor's desk. Come on. You say, what that got to do with anything? Because I'm talking about experience. I know what it's like when a man comes to the job and gets this far from my face and starts cursing me and calling me every filthy name that he can think of and wants me to fight him because I gave my life to Jesus Christ. I want you to know, my God, if he'd have hit me, I'm going to let you finish that. I'm not even going to say nothing. What are you talking about? I'm talking about this. When all of a sudden there's an instant peace. That 
something supernatural comes over my spirit and I just let him go. The Bible said in Psalms chapter 2, why did the heathen rage and the kings imagine a vain thing against the anointed of God? But when it was all said and done, the Lord let him smite him and beat him and hit him and tear him up and put him down and throw him in a, you know, and put him on, put him on the streets and beat him so bad that he was barely able to be recognized according to Isaiah chapter, chapter 53. And then they nailed him to a cross, despised him, despised him, despised him, and mocked him and laughed and cursed him. Oh, no. Oh, but what did he do Why he stay? Why he's on the cross? He said, Father, forgive them, for he know not what he is doing. God has got to give us a fresh anointing of how to learn to forgive again and forgive one another and forgive people around us that have hurt us. You say, what's that got to do with being? It's called experience so that when somebody comes behind you, you're going to have that experience to say, I've been there. I know what that's like. And I'm telling you, my God uh, is able to do greater than that. Uh, he will take what the enemy meant for evil, and he'll do something good about it. <laughs> By God's grace, I was able to walk away later on. Shortly during the afternoon, this is only one of every. I know what it's like to have a man hold a knife to my throat as a young man drunk as he could be and hold a knife to my throat and would tell me, said, you move an inch. Said, I'll cut your throat right here. And just to stand there, he was he outpowered me. I couldn't do much, a young boy, and would hold a knife to my throat. Oh, Oh, I haven't even began to tell you some of the things that we've been through. But I'm here to tell you today, my God has delivered me out of the mouth of the lion. He's delivered me from the dens of the enemy. He's taken me out of fiery furnaces. He's opened red seas when I didn't know he could even do that. He took me out of a pit like he did Joshua or Joseph. Somebody help me. He gave me a victory in battles like he did Joshua. Oh, hallelujah. He's helped me lead congregations like he did Ezra. Somebody help me preach today. You say, what's that got to do with God. I'm telling you, my God knows. He knows what we need, what to do, and what he can take us through. Never will he put on us what we could bear. And to have the Lord just begin to melt my spirit and watch the knife drop. That's God. Sometimes it don't always go that way. Then I guess I'd just be in heaven. And when that young man walked away from me that day, Later on, Sister Janet, his brother, came to me and said, I am, I am so sorry about what my brother did today to you. He told me, he said, my brother and I were raised in a pastor's home. And he said, all the mess and the abuse that we went through, he is so angry at God. And when he saw you, all he saw was somebody that he identified with the father that he never actually really knew. Sometimes we don't, matter of fact, most of the time we don't see it. Like the servants, we don't see what God sees. We don't see. He said, open his eyes that he may see. The Bible said the Lord opened the young eyes of the young man. And he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire. Can I get a recount? Church, family, do we really believe God is still with us? In all this mess that we're going through in America, and, and all the stipulations and all the processes and all the things that are taking place, Yes, we are affected by decisions and by sin and by, by, by fraud and by all the stuff that goes through from the education systems all the way to the political systems. We are subject to that. But may God give us enough grace to be able to pray against the evil. Can I hear it, amen? To pray against the sin and pray against the, the, the incompetence and incapability that God will give us leaders. Hello? That God will give us leaders that would be falling in love with God. Can God do that? Yes he can. You and I know, oh, I'm about to preach. There is nothing too big for our God. I say we need a recount. We need a recount. There are more for us than there are against us. 
I'm just here to give you the message. That's what the Lord's saying. There are more for us than there are against us. Now, I want to give you three thoughts. And you know that was just the introduction, but man, I'm feeling good today. Matter of fact, let me finish this, Brother Dan, if we've got it, verse 18, other, uh, uh, Lyric, if you would, you and Travis, verse 18, and when they came down to him, Elisha prayed to the Lord and said, smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness, and he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. And Elisha said to them, this is not the way, neither is this the city, follow me, and I will bring you to the man whom you seek, but he led them to Samaria. And it came to pass when they were coming to Samaria that Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of these men that they may see. And the Lord opened their eyes and they saw and behold, they were in the midst of Samaria, which was the capital of Jerusalem at that day. And the king of Israel said to Elisha, when he saw them, my father, shall I smite them? Shall I smite them? He answered and said, thou shalt not smite them. Would you smite those whom thou hast taken captive with thy sword? And with thy bow, set that they may eat and go to their master. And he prepared great provisions for them. And when they had eaten and drunk, he sent them away, and they went to their master. So the bands of the Syrians came no more into the land of Israel. I believe there are more for us today than there are against us. Uh, the writer tells us today that when a man or woman pleases God, God will even make his enemies at peace with him. Somebody's not, somebody needs to understand today and hear that the battle, this battle is not yours. It belongs to the Lord. Amen. And how many know that God doesn't fight against his own people? He may correct us and chastise us, but he never fights against us. Come on, somebody help me this morning. God never, 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 never fights. I like what the man said yesterday. God is a giver, not a taker. So the, who is he fighting against? He's fighting against the enemies. But at the same time, he is also making a way of provision for the enemies. So that he allows them to become blind to their own self so that all they begin to see is who he is. Listen to this. Three things. And I'm going to run to Matthew chapter 4. And I believe they'll have it on the screen. Matthew chapter 4. Three things that Satan does not want you to know about God. It is one thing to know something about God, but it's another thing to really, really believe that God knows everything. Okay? The Bible tells us in, are you still with me? Say amen. Matthew chapter 1, verse, chapter 4, verse 1. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, notice the devil didn't show up till after the 40 days. Mm -hmm. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God he said then you command these stones to be made bread but Jesus here's what Jesus answered and said it is written this is recorded in Deuteronomy but he said it is written man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Let me share with you for a moment, if I may. Number one, the word you had yesterday is a good word, and it's a great word, but get ready. I said get ready because God wants to give us here in our families, in our homes, in our marriages, in our relationships with one another, in our employer-employment relationship. God wants to give fresh manna. God wants to give fresh word. Amen. When you're in this book on a daily basis, you're like the Israelites that went out every day, every day except the seventh day. The seventh day, they never gathered manna, but every day of the week, they gathered manna. And when they gathered manna, I'm telling you what you know they ate they fed uh, let's realize number one uh, number one is this satan tempts god's children to disbelieve the power of the word of god that's why he doesn't want you to read in this book he doesn't want you to participate in this book because he knows uh, that if you get a revelation if you allow the Spirit of God to open your spiritual eyes, uh, Paul said to the Ephesians, that your understanding, the eyes might be enlightened and be opened uh, unto the understanding uh, of the Word of God. Uh, and if you get an understanding, I'm telling you, uh, you're going to do things you never saw done. Uh, you're going to see things you never thought could happen. Uh, am I preaching to anybody today? Uh, it's not you that's going to do it. Uh, it's the power of the Word of the living God. God, uh, that's living in you, uh, working in you, uh, living out of you, uh, manifesting through your life. Hallelujah. 
The devil doesn't want you to believe the word of God. There's only two things you do with this book, family. You read it, believe it, and practice it. Now, I don't have a hard time with the belief part. It's the practicing I'm struggling with. Oh, you didn't know I was that honest, didn't you? Listen to me. I do not walk on water. I've fallen out of my kayak more than once. Satan tempted God's children to disbelieve the power of God's word. Satan attempted to try to get, the, to get Jesus to turn the stones into bread. He wanted him to prematurely believe that he could manifest his power in a source, in a command that was given by the devil himself. You ever, ever had the devil come to you in a thought pattern and say, well, if God was really God, he'd do this. If God was really God, he'd let you have that. He hasn't changed. In the garden, he asked Eve, he said, has God said? Eve's response should have, been, should have been, yes, he has. It was, but not strong enough. So number one, Satan tempts God's children to disbelieve the power of God's word. Did you know the word, John chapter 1 says the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. All of the word of creation was in the man Jesus Christ. Somebody help me. Like the centurion soldier. You remember the story. Sent his servant to tell Jesus, if you would please, I know I'm not worthy, but would you come on over to my house, my servant. I love this man, and he is dying. If you would come over, and the Bible says, while Jesus was making his way there toward the centurion, who was a Roman Gentile, not Jewish, he made his way there, and the, the centurion sent another, another messenger and said, don't bother the master to come. All he has to do, hello, he didn't put hello in there, but I did. He, did, he said, all he has to do is just say the word. Come on, say the word. If you love Jesus today, the same manifestations of the sons of God in Romans chapter 8, he said that the people around you are waiting for the manifestation. They're waiting to see a God. God in you, and you can show them that way by the word that you have and dwelt in your spirit. Can I hear an amen? I told the guys yesterday, up to January until now, I have read 171 books. Pretty impressive. Not really. I've read through the Bible twice, the New Testament three times. You add them all up, it's 171. Brother Freddie, I love the word of God. I love God's word. I have my share of, I used to when I worked at Procter & Gamble, among seven, 600 employees. Every day I took my Bible to work. I had kept it there in, in, in a little cubby hole I've shared with you before, and I kept it there because I knew that there was a variety, many, many, a multiplicity of many women and backgrounds and lives and lifestyles and different places people lived and come from. Folks, what they did not need, now hear me today, what they didn't need is my opinion. They needed the word of God. When every time they would look at me and say, you mean you're telling me? I say, no, the word's telling you. Well, what about this? Listen to the book. Did I have all the answers? No, but the more that I read, the more knowledge. Come on. God, he's, God, hello, is God opening anybody's eyes to the word of God lately? You say, but I don't understand it. Well, you know you're not if you never read it. You got to start somewhere. Brother Johnny just completed a 30 mile bike race. <laughs> I could have done that backwards. I'm just kidding, Brother Johnny. <laughs> yeah, he knows that's a lie. And it took training, it took stamina, it took stability, it took fortitude, it took I've got to finish mindset. Start. You say, where do I start with the Bible? Start in the beginning. That's where God started. Are you ready? Number two, are you still with me? It's not even 12. My goodness. Not that that's ever going to matter to me. Then the devil takes him into a high... First of all, he knew that he could not convince him that the word of God was sufficient. Number two, 
The devil takes him into a holy city and sets him on a pinnacle of the temple and says unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down for his written. He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. Number two, Satan tempts God's children to disbelieve the purpose of God's ways. If you're not careful, you'll listen to the lies of the devil. And how many know that Jesus said in the book of John that every time Satan speaks, he speaks a lie? Every time, every word that ever comes out of the mouth of Satan is a lie. Come on, every word, it's in the book. Jesus said that. Listen, Jesus didn't tell a falsehood to get somebody to practice what was truth. Every word Jesus spoke was absolute truth because he said, I am the way. Come on, the light and the truth. Can you, can you say amen? Every word that Jesus spoke was absolute truth. Every word that Satan speaks is opposite to the word of the living God. It is absolutely untrue. And when the, when the enemy comes, when you hear that voice says, I'm not good enough, no, you're not. But you're covered by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, when it comes to time to take, take communion here, you come on up with, with, with just the love and the purpose and knowing that I am set uh, for the glory and the kingdom of God. Uh, how many know you don't have to pastor? You don't have to be a missionary. All you have to do is love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength every day where you live. That's got to be the key. So the devil comes and tries to tempt us that I don't have a purpose in life. Somebody asked my dad one time, who worked with Fresno PD and the Sheriff's Department for many, many years as a, as a chaplain. He rode with them, worked there, married them, buried them, and, and went to all. The, he did dead notifications. He, he did a lot of that stuff. That's who my dad was. He enjoyed that apart from pastoring. And someone asked him at a, at a, a place where a gentleman had committed suicide, and the, and the officer looked at my dad and said, What causes that, Lee? I think my dad gave one of the best answers I've ever heard. He said, the man lost hope. Robin Williams had committed suicide years ago, among many other of the stars, when they run the gamut of life. Somewhere they should have and could have and probably did run into somebody that shared the love of Jesus Christ. I want you to grab this today, family of God. Hear this today. If you love Jesus, you're more complete now than you'll ever be, no matter how much money you ever acquire, no matter how much power, presence, how many relationships you have, how many people give you pats on the back every day. If you're in love with Jesus Christ, it will be more than enough. Can I hear an amen? Because he is more than enough. He's my supplier. He's my mentor. He's my lover of my soul. He's a keeper of my family. Family. What I commit to him, he's able to keep under against that day. He's a savior. He's my creator. If I get hit tomorrow by a car, I'm going to see you in heaven one day. Why? He's my resurrection and my life. Hallelujah. He's my bread of life. He's my living water. He's a love of my soul. He's a giver of my spirit. Hallelujah. He's a keeper of the gates of my heart. If I get mad, he'll love me. He'll help me. If I fail, he'll pick me up. If I sin, he'll forgive me again. That's a God we serve. We need to reach out. Hallelujah. <laughs> Years ago. All right, not too far back. The Lord allowed me a place in, in his presence, a prayer that was amazing to me. I, a place of prayer that I'd only read about. But he put such a hunger in my spirit. And I could not, I just couldn't get away from my prayer closet. And for quite a while, fasting and praying, fasting and praying, just drawing close to the Lord. He was opening up scriptures to me. He, he talked to me through the word at night. He talked to me on the job. He shared things with he. He even shared world events with me that I'm not going to share here yet, not yet. He shared things with me that was he put in my heart, and I mean he just. <laughs> I'd never experienced what I had experienced then. I had experienced such a such a just a joy of spending time with him, and worshiping and enjoying fellowship with him. I reached a place where I just enjoyed spending time worshiping him, never asking anything. Just loving the Lord. I believe he's bringing some of that back. As a matter of fact, he's, it's, it's in the body. It's a part of our ministry to love the Lord for who he is, Brother Freddie, more than what he does. And when we, love, learn, we, we learn again to love him for who he is, 
I guarantee you what we need will be supplied. I believe that with all my heart. And I even spoke to the Lord one day in prayer, and I said, Lord, I'm love, I love you so much. I'm enjoying our fellowship. I am so thankful that you have lifted this call off of my life to preach. Well, the buzzer went off in heaven. Uh, wrong answer. But he didn't tell me that. So one morning, I'd been in prayer for about a couple, just a couple hours, just waiting on the Lord, enjoying my time, wrapped up my little blanket in that little closet area I prayed. I literally entered into my closet on many occasions. And I would just pray and pour my heart out to the Lord. And as I was praying, the Lord spoke to me that morning at about 5 o'clock, and he told me, he said, you'll be preaching today. Now, this isn't like the story I mentioned the other night. You still with me? I move on to point number three. I'm talking about purpose now. And whenever the Lord spoke to my heart, I thought, well, that's nice. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me sometimes. I am a real mess. But he loves me so much. Does he love you today? Like Sister Anna's given us the word. He's in love with us. Live from that. Quit worrying and fretting every day about performance. And just learn to love him. He'll work the rest. He's got to, Brother Fred. If he doesn't, I know I can't. And as I got up that morning, I went inside the house. It was about 5 or 6 in the morning. Pretty soon I get, I get this call. Back then, we didn't have cell phones. Those were, those were the days? I don't know. Maybe not. But I, I got a call from a gentleman, and he told me, he said, Brother Bradford, he said, the pastor down in Delhi needs you to preach for him this morning. He's been real sick. And I told him, I said, uh, I don't do that anymore. He goes, you do now. I got ready. I thought, well, that's strange. I got ready because, Lord, I, already, I didn't do that. No, I went down there. We had a wonderful time, had a wonderful service. Matter of fact, we wound up in a seven-night revival after that. See, God's purpose, God's purpose, when it precedes your plans, it will be, there will be production. When you allow God's purpose for your life to precede your plans, there's going to be some major production. Somebody needs to write that down right now. When you allow God's purpose to precede your plans, it's going to produce, there's going to be production. We've been talking about harvest, and we've been talking about fruit here. Does anybody know that we're in revival here at Live Oak? And today, we're going to push the enemy back a little bit further. Brother Dan, we're going to push him back a little further today. He didn't like what I preached Wednesday night. He was pretty upset about that. One young lady used to testify in our church, said, The devil's been on my back all day. I used to say, Praise God. Because if he's on her back, he ain't bothering me today. He's not omnipresent. Hello. The devil can only be in one place at one amount of time. But the God that we serve can be in every place, every time, all the time. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so if you get up and testify, say, the Lord's been on, he's been, he been with me all day. I get to jump up and say, he's been with me all day. And then somebody else can jump up and say, oh, no, he's been with me all day. Come on. Can I get a recount? Has the Lord been with anybody today? Has the Lord loved on anybody today? Has the Lord kept us today? Has the Lord allowed us to be in this building one more time that we might lift our hearts and our hands under the King of kings and the Lord of lords? I don't know what heaven's like, but as long as Jesus is there, that's all that matters to me. Last time I checked, he's going to be there. Amen. All right, point number three. You still with me? First of all, Satan cannot keep you from knowing the power of God. If you haven't been filled with the Holy Spirit, get ready. Because we're about to come into some services where somebody's going to come in here and say, I don't even know about all this stuff. And the Spirit's going to fall on them. And they're going to start speaking in tongues as the Spirit gives utterance. You say, well, won't things go south? Listen to me. I've been looking around at the church for a lot of years. And I'm beginning to wonder how much further south can it go. 
Come on, people are routine in their worship, routine in their commitments, routine in their giving, their routine and everything else. But I think God's been stirring the pot. Why do you think he allowed COVID-19 to come our way? So we can learn about priority again. Hallelujah. We can learn that God is still God. He rules America. America doesn't rule her pathway. God does. God does. My God is still on the throne today. He sees what a mess America's in from the top to the bottom. But I'm believing God that something's getting ready to change. Something's on the move. Something's happening. Can I hear an amen? I'm not preaching emotion today. I'm talking spiritual application today. If my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then they're going to hear from heaven. And Mr. Newsom, that's when we get rain from God. Not until then. I can't believe I'm here. I can't believe it. I'm, I'm still shocked. But when God wants somebody like you, he'll reach down and love on you and pull you up and say, hey, it's time to get a life again with God. Tell you what, one of the most exciting parts of our week is when we're able to come out here. We were, and it was a little under the weather last Wednesday evening. We Thursday we didn't get to come out, Brother Freddie, but to watch when they put on that worship, these young young men and women come out here. Hello, and they start lifting their hands up front here. What a joy! Where's all of our young people? Where's young people stand up this morning? Come on, all of our young people stand up. Give them a hand. These young men and women are awesome for God. Thank you guys so much. What a joy. You can be seated. What a joy they are. And I'll tell you what, God's going to put in their hearts with ideas. <laughs> Brother Freddie, hang in there, my friend. The battle belongs to the Lord. I said the battle belongs to the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. When the devil comes knocking, Jesus is going to answer the door. I'm going to say that again. That sounded pretty good. When the devil comes knocking, the, the <laughs> Jesus is going to answer the door. How do you know that? Well, it's in the book. I'm just telling you. Jesus said, the wicked one cometh, and he finds nothing in me. Oh, hallelujah. When the devil comes knocking and Jesus opens the door, guess what he's going to get? The word. And then he's going to run. You say, Pastor, you really preach unimaginable. <laughs> well... Let me be nice about this. If you were really where you want to be with God, you'd understand what I'm talking about today. I've had all I could take about somebody telling me how weak I am, how lonely I am, how, come on, how empty I am, how depressed I am, how down I am. If you stay on social media long enough, that's all you're going to hear. Can I hear an amen? And I've had about all I can take of one church bashing another church and wondering, should we sing a, uh, should we sing a, a celebration hill songs or should we sing a elevation songs? Should we do what? Listen, if God shows up, I don't care if you sing Jesus love me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so, Brother Fred and I were talking about this and when it was all said and done we agreed that God's been showing up and that's all that matters why because we believe in the power of the presence of God without his power without his word without his presence we have no purpose and I thank God that he's given me a purpose closing number I don't know what it is number three Again, the devil takes him up to the seating high mountain, verse 8, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. I wonder if he looked down in eons of time and saw America in, 19, in 2021. And the Lord said, I don't want none of that. <laughs> Hello? He's the power and the prince of the air. He's a, he is a, he's a prince, but he's not the king. He has certain, certain rulership. And I am convinced that the only rulership he has in my life as a child of God is the room that I give him. And I have to admit, 
Some days it seems like he won the battle. And I'm telling you straight out, I'm as honest as I know how to be with the God that loves us today. I've sat in my chair, I've sat in my couch with my coffee and eaten my oats with bananas. And I've sat there wondering what in the world went on today. Where did I go wrong? And I beat myself up and I slap myself and think you should be a real man of God. And about the time that word, that all that comes out of am I preaching to anybody today? By the time that mess comes out of my mouth, listen, somebody says, does the devil read your mind? He don't have to. He listens to how we talk. And I know that. And I've had more than once for 42 years, Sister Anna's had to look at me and say, you got to stop. No more. I know it's hard. I know it's tough. I know we don't know how we're going to pay the bills. I know the kids are in a mess and the grandkids. I don't know what's going to happen. I know it goes on and on and on. But today is another day to say, God, I give it to you. God, I'm trusting you. God, I believe in you. God, you've given me the victory. God, I'm on the winning side today. What's the worst can happen to you? Die and go to heaven? <laughs> Nothing can separate us from his love. Not even death. Number three. He took him to a high temple, showed him all the glory of the world. He said, all these things will I give thee. He's going to show the Antichrist all that glory one day. And he's going to buy into it. And the devil, because he's a father of all lies, pastor, he's going to look around and say, I got my man. Because this man wouldn't buy into his lies. The next man will. Jesus said, me, you wouldn't receive. Another, when he comes, him, you're going to receive. I don't know how much of that we're going to see the son of perdition, Paul said in 2 Thessalonians. I don't know how much. But the battle belongs to the Lord. He knew what Judas was going to do. Hello. And he knows what Satan's getting ready to do through the beast, the mark, the false prophet, and the Antichrist. He said, but we're going to be long gone. I hope you're right. But if we're not long gone, God's going to help us make sure we're long in. Can I hear an amen? Anybody with me? Everything, maybe a lot of the troubles that we've gone through, especially in the last couple of years, maybe has to cause us to realize not how, how something we are, but how great God is. Are we in mood? Are we ready for deliverance? She said, not yet. Just a couple, you know, almost. Aren't you glad to be on the Lord? Aren't you glad he invited us to his side? And we accept him. Would you stand with me, please? I'm going to go ahead and close. The, and then the Bible says, he looked at the devil and he said, get thee hence, Satan, for it's written, thou shalt worship. <laughs> and thou, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall we serve. Be careful with what you attend most of your devotion to. And then he says this, and the devil leaves him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Number three, Satan tempts God's children to dishonor. The presence of God. He tries to get you to disbelieve his power, his word, his presence, and his purpose that he has for you in your life. Ann and I have been, again, married 42 plus years. And we've been in and out, seen a lot of things, been involved in a lot of things, seen a lot of victories, seen a lot of defeats, had a lot of ups, a lot of downs, in and outs. And just lived life. But I want somebody at my funeral. I don't plan on leaving next week. Now, I told you when I jumped out of that plane in Lodi when we went there at 14,000 feet, I told them the following Sunday, some of you had your prayers answered and some of you didn't. You remember that? <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know how that kind of went over. It just kind of came out that way. But I, when I, want, I want somebody to say they loved God. They love their family. Come on. And they love their community. When you're living for purpose, and you're living with God's plans and directions, he'll be there to help us on our jobs, in our homes, 
I know what it's like to put 10, 12 hour days on a job, come home, go to prayer meetings, go visit hospitals and preach that night. I know what that's like. It's tiring and wearing down. But let me say this. I'd rather wear out for Jesus than the devil. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Now, we've had an awesome time here this morning, but when we get back next Sunday, I want to see some party going on. Come on now. I like what the man of God said yesterday. He said, said if, if you're during the worship service and you're like this, he said, this is what you do when you're at the DMV. <laughs> Can I hear an amen? Because you're probably going to be there a while. Huh, huh Brother Ben? You're probably going to be there for a while. He goes, I don't want to be there. Nobody wants to be there. The person behind the desk doesn't want to be there. What do you say we just do a shout and praise and worship that it puts the enemy to flight. Amen. Give him a hand this morning. Amen. Praise God. Praise God.